Okay. This one is called Church Teachings That Inspire the Narcissist. And I'm going to read from Jeremiah 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They encourage and strengthen the hands of evil doers so that none returns from his wickedness. Now I'd like to replace the word encourage with the word inspire for this study. Jeremiah speaks of false prophets who actually inspire evildoers. False prophets who give hope to evildoers. And here are some examples of what I'm talking about. Messages like unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, do not judge, the aforementioned teachings may or may not inspire the actual sheep of the fold, but there is a group in that sheepfold that will be inspired by teaching that falls in line with candy-coated doctrines concerning love, judgment, and abuse. The personality type that will be inspired by topics like do not judge is the narcissist. <clears throat> it's the narcissists who will be encouraged, inspired even by topics like unconditional love. We must come to understand that inspiration for the narcissist comes from messaging Messaging that builds confidence in his ability to get away with certain behaviors. Now, teaching that God's love is unconditional, this is music to the wicked man's ears. Unconditional love places the wicked man on the same moral playing field as a person of conscience. And the wicked man knows this. Now here's a question for you. Do most churches teach that a man of conscience, a person of conscience, is to shun wicked people, to avoid wicked people? Do you hear much of that in church? I doubt it. Not if they have a big bank account. Thank you. Yet the scripture is filled with admonishments to shun wicked people. Scripture teaches us that the wicked man is to be shunned, to be avoided by the man of conscience. Not loved. Not loved unconditionally. Now here's another dynamic I'll bet does not get addressed too often in church either. And that is this dynamic of the false self. In the, in the New Testament, Yeshua called it uh, hypocrites, the pretenders, pretending. Same thing as, as a narcissist creating a false self, the false self of the covert narcissist. Now let's talk about unconditional love for the false self of the narcissist. You see, I don't think we quite understand that false personalities of false people, they are the equivalent of the graven images of old. The false self is an idol. Unconditional love in the name of God is being bestowed, being sanctioned by church, I might add, 
but is being bestowed upon idols, idols of the false self of these narcissists. It's just something to think about. The message of do not judge, that message excites the narcissist. Do not judge encourages wolves that sit in the pews. They can use the can't judge me card on anyone daring to question their behavior. The can't judge me card can be played on a church member, a family member, a spouse. In a judgment-free environment, the wolf is free to roam and in many cases devour wherever and whoever he pleases. Now, Also, in a judgment-free zone, it can feel like a sin to so much as question the motives of a church member, family member, or spouse. Judgment-free zones. These provide fertile feeding grounds for wolves. Wolves that eat sheep. Now, I'm wondering if you, if you guys can relate to this, this thought. I've heard more sermons than I can count with messaging that centers on God will judge those who judge. Yet I can't recall any sermons with this message. God will judge those who abuse. Never heard that one. I heard this. I can't count how many times I heard this one. God will not forgive you unless you forgive. I heard that messaging for many, many years. Yet, I cannot recall messaging that once communicated this, that God will not forgive you unless you make restitution to the people you have abused. The narcissistic abuser loves that his victim is afraid she will not be forgiven by God if she doesn't forgive him. The abuser loves that. The malignant narcissist delights in the knowledge that his prey is afraid she will be judged by God if she judges him. This type of messaging excites the malignant narcissist, and it's enough to make him want to go to church without missing a Sunday. Now, finally, I think you might find this little factoid interesting. I tried looking up the word unconditional in the King James Version, the New International Version, and Amplified Classic. And that word, the word unconditional, is not once found in any of those translations. You can't even find it. Thank you for watching. Thank you. God bless you.